How's it going? This is your co-host, Ethan, from none other than KCROW-FM. It is Thursday, April 21st, 2022, and we hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we are trying out a new format, and we will be returning to the talk of Esoteria and just having a blast in general here soon. Today, we are recounting a tale from a few years ago, and we hope you get something positive out of it. Enjoy. I guess the only way that I can preface this story is to say that I can't blame anybody else for what occurs in the in the situation as well as I don't want this to be how can I say about me because it was just it was a different version of myself back in the back in the day but um I want it to be seen as a cautionary tale cuz if only I learn from this situation I mean it, it'll still be just as important as a of a lesson than really anything but I think it's best to also throw it out there but I guess we'll uh begin the story at about I guess like 2017 2018 or so something like that um I had just moved back from living in Harrisburg for like a year or so and um, at the time, I was working through a temp agent, just doing random jobs here and there, like unloading trucks full of fireworks. I think it was like, yeah, a firework company. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, getting stuff off the back of garbage trucks. Oh, yeah, and uh, I remember riding along on the back of a garbage truck for a few a few times. Uh, that was pretty interesting in the winter. Um, th- and there was also a time whenever I would work where they drop off the garbage, and you can just th- you basically just clean up around that that area where they drop everything off. Like they'll take the truck will go from wherever they pick up the trash to this facility. And then our job as the temp agents, <clears throat> well, as the the workers for the temp agent, we would go clean up all the extra stuff that would fall off. Yeah, just a lot of different temp jobs. And eventually, I thought it'd be best to get a more permanent job so I can move on, get a new place, I started saving up. I think I worked at a few warehouses before this, the setting of this story began more so. But I had a little bit of warehouse experience beforehand, but I went to this warehouse and it kind of worked for me. It was like a night shift job kind of situation. And I thought that would be like the best situation that I could get into because, I mean, you get paid more and... I told myself, oh, I'm a night owl, so um, not a big deal. So I keep up with this job for probably like a year, like a year and a half or something like that. And um, there's this kind of program that they have running through this particular warehouse where um, you, if you pick a certain amount of um, items in a certain uh, allotted amount of time, it kind of equates to the amount of time that you, that you need for the day. So basically, you can leave early if you get your quota for that day. This particular night, gotten this quota. This is like the first time it's ever happened too, and I was just like, "Oh man, let me go check with my with my manager, see what they say." They're like, "Oh, yeah, you made it. So yeah, you can leave early." It was probably around like. It was pretty early. I don't know, something like 
10 30 11 i forget when i began like when i left it was just earlier than usual so i was just like oh man this is the first time this has ever happened let me go out and uh just have a a nice night and i mean i guess at the time none of my friends were like up so i decided to go out and uh there was a local bar nearby and i was like oh i have like a beer or two wait it out just have a decent night and i remember going to this place and there was a dj there i'm not gonna name the place but there was like a dj there and they had like projection like visuals like on the floor and on the on the walls and stuff and then there was like a new year's eve party but it wasn't new year's yet at this point I forget what the exact holiday was for this DJ at this bar, but I just remember there was one there, so, yeah, I just went there, had a beer or two, sat around for a while, I realized it was getting kind of late, so I began to leave, and something that I had sort of picked up on, on the way to this, this bar after work, was that it's kind of foggy out. But this place was kind of relatively close to the warehouse that I left early. So I didn't really like pay very much, very much mind because like I'm not really traveling that far, I guess you could say. But as I leave this bar after like an hour or two, I realize that this is some very thick fog. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, I can I could barely see like a car that was I don't know, like 200 yards away or something. It was very thick fog this night. So I uh, go on my merry way back home. (laughs) And uh, I'm on my way back, just kind of taking my time because this fog is just ridiculous. And I'm almost home whenever I uh, I was just thinking like, oh, man, I used to smoke cigarettes. I was like, "Uh," I was like. I'll just have a cigarette before I get home so I'm not just sitting in the driveway smoking a cigarette. So so I'm almost home and I I go over, the, like I make the decision that I'm going to just go out and kind of uh, have like an another cigarette. I remember I had to pay back this person that I got these um, vinyl records for. Like they, they're, they have stuff that they have sitting out. And they suggest that you leave money, basically. It's it's, it's kind of like a, a trust kind of situation where people leave their stuff out and they're like, yeah, give us money, however much you think is needed, or like see you see fit, basically. And uh, I was like, oh, I guess I'll uh, smoke another cigarette before I get home and go pay this, pay off these vinyl records that I got for my family and friends. So um, to get to this particular place, I have to go over a bridge. So I go over this bridge, about to have my last cigarette of the evening, throw this person a few dollars. But on the other side of this bridge, turns out there are some train tracks that go across the road and the way that this road is set up is from the direction that I was coming from if you go over this bridge um, once you go over the, these train tracks there is a sharp turn right and uh, mind you the thing that you have to remember is there is fog still going on as I go over this bridge, and I have to turn right immediately after these train tracks, basically. I guess I turned right too quickly, and I turn right, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm going to be on my merry way, and I'm like thinking I'm going up this sharp, sharp turn right, basically, and uh, I'm like, wait, how come I'm not moving right now? And I still don't understand why I'm not moving because I'm still in this fog. So I just think that like, oh man, my like 
car puttered out or something. So I get out and I realize that I'm currently stuck on some train tracks in my Honda Accord. Um, so first thing that goes through my mind is I have to try to contact my, um, like insurance, not like insurance, like AAA. And <clears throat> I've noticed throughout the night I had like no cell phone service for some reason. Like this was consistent from whenever I left for work because I was about to like text somebody whenever I was leaving. But for some reason I couldn't. I was like, oh, I'm probably just parked in a wrong in the wrong spot in the parking lot of this warehouse or something. But consistently to this spot, which was probably like 10 miles away from that spot, so had my bills up to date and everything. And as soon as I realized that my car is stuck on the train tracks, I'm like, oh, got to call AAA. Then I look down at my phone, like, what? This is so odd. So I go through the list of things that... I would think would help, like, try to back up, try to put stuff behind the back wheels, stuff like that, um, and it, it's not really doing anything, so I start honking the horn of the car, trying to, like, wake somebody up that was nearby, maybe they could do something to help, hopefully, just keep honking, honking like a madman on the train tracks, probably waking everybody up, they're like, why is this person, like, honking their horn so much? And (laughs) lo and behold, it's a a dude stuck on the train tracks with his Honda Accord. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, I keep doing that for a while and I start to consider the worst case scenario of what may happen. But I try to keep a positive attitude through all this because the only thing that you can do in this situation is stay calm. I start to gather my things like my backpack and all all my valuables and stuff. And I was just hoping somebody would come by and like, you know, help me out. But it was getting kind of later into the night. This was like four or five hours after I left work, basically. Something like that. So at that point, the true fear kind of started to set in where I'm like, wait, so what am I going to do? Like, uh, I can't contact anybody right now. So how is anybody going to know what to do in this situation? So I start to consider like, what do I do? So eventually the train, I hear the worst sound that you can possibly hear in this situation as a person with their Honda Accord stuck on train tracks at this point. Hear the, the, beautiful sound of a train approaching from around the bend at this particular spot. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the particular distance between where I was at this kind of closed off intersection area and wherever this bend is, like many hundred of yards away basically, but still can hear the train whistle Nonetheless, so I hear that, I'm like, well, I guess this is going to happen, so I might as well try and do anything that I possibly can, so I'm at this intersection a few hundred hundred miles, a few hundred yards away, and being careful, because I'm trying to judge how far this train is as to compare to me, I'm like, oh, well, I probably have enough time, I could flick my high beams at this guy, maybe honk the horn at the same time, maybe he'll slow down, maybe, because I think I know what the SOS flashing is, it's like a particular pattern that you do if there's someone in distress, but I'm doing that before, well, this is like right after he comes around the bend, but regardless, I'm doing this probably for like a minute, because it's still pretty far away, but I can still hear it coming nonetheless, so I'm I'm flicking my lights, honking my horn. Uh, I just kind of hope that I would hear some screeching and then it would break. 
but lo and behold, I guess my <laughs> my SOS signal did not work. So, you know, the train eventually collided with my Honda Accord and I jumped out of the way just in time. I didn't get hit with any shrapnel or anything. It was just definitely something you don't see every day is uh, your car getting totaled from a train. I mean, the train stopped pretty much immediately as soon as it hit my car. Um, I just kind of wish that was deployed a little bit earlier, but I don't know. I, I don't know if it was the car that stopped the train or if the conductor stopped the train or I don't really bl- this is my <laughs> this is not for that person to be blamed about they did the right thing so I didn't know what to do in this situation so I still didn't have any cell phone sor- service I made sure to grab my phone check my phone no signal still so I was just like well I guess I'm really not like crazy far away I started running home so I can get a hold of somebody that can possibly get in contact with AAA or somebody to get this car off the tracks. So I start heading home, get a hold of them, and uh, then we head back to said area so we can uh, figure that out, call AAA when we're there, get back to the area where this happened roughly, and there's a uh, few policemen, policewomen looking around and they're up on the train tracks kind of seeing what the layout of this is. And there's somebody that looked through the car and stuff. And uh, I guess it was determined that I was not f- seen fit as to drive a car, even though I drank like a couple hours ago. So they... They test me and I didn't do so hot. So they take me in and I begin the journey of a three year hiatus of driving. (laughs) And I just wanted to share some things I'm grateful for and things that I've learned in this time period. Obviously, don't drive in fog. Um, Don't have any amount of alcohol in your system while driving in the fog or otherwise. I guess make sure you're in contact with somebody whenever you leave work or something so they know where you're at. Just in case a situation occurs where you get stopped somewhere or something. I don't know. Maybe there's traffic somewhere on your way home from work. And that just like lets the, the person know where you're at and they can check on you if anything. As well as in the amount of time of the hiatus of with driving, um, it really made me aware. It, it makes you aware that driving is a privilege and the ability to drive is v- makes things so much easier in this day and age. I know this because basically rode a bike to work for a year. Had to figure out how to get an Uber for a year, which got kind of expensive. But I mean, I guess this is it's kind of my karma for that situation. So, yeah, finally am out of that situation. Thank goodness it's been a long three years of biking back and forth to work it was pretty nice though because pennsylvania has some beautiful sites so it was pretty cool seeing those sites so i thought that was a pretty positive aspect really did uh humble me as a person i mean i didn't consider myself an overtly cocky person back in that time but definitely made me realize how important life is and how the balance of life, I guess, evens out, sort of, you could say. And in a weird way, I'm kind of grateful the situation happened as expensive or eye-opening of a situation happening. Because, I mean, 
if, say, I didn't go through this situation, maybe it would have been somebody else that would have to have gone through this situation. And I can't imagine the amount of strife they would have to go through. I'm basically through this, and I've been told this person where I've been been have gone through the same situation that I did with the traumaticness of the whole train situation. They probably couldn't have handled it in that amount of time. I had basically cut back to barely any alcohol at all. But along the way, it really taught me how I really appreciate those around me for helping me through these kinds of situations because uh, nobody can really do anything on their own. I mean, obviously, there are very out there's like outlier situations where you are from the ground up and everything. But I am just so grateful for those around me because without them, I would probably not be where I'm at today. Very being very supportive, I've made a new f- few new friends along the way. I'm very glad that I've met new people, developing new relations with many people and developing relations that I already had before because you find that some friends don't care that you can't drive. They are willing to go see you no matter what. And I just want this story to be taken as, as I said, a cautionary tale, I guess, because I wouldn't want anybody else to go through this. And me just holding in my side of the story doesn't really help anything other than myself, which I'm very proud of myself for getting through this pretty much unmarked other than the experience itself helping me learn, basically. And I hope that somebody learns from this not to do that, I guess you could say. But I, like on a lighthearted note, I didn't mean to make it this a very serious thing. I just thought I would throw this out there that it's very uh, helpful to tell other people this. And if you've had a similar situation that you'd be willing to share, we'd love to hear it down in the comments. Just let us know. We'll be positively reviewing two peas in a pod this coming week. And... We hope that you listen along with us while we go through it. Stay tuned. We'll get right back at you and we'll uh, be on for episode 11. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Ethan, your co-host, signing out.